How open-minded are you? Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 69 of our BU 365 Day Challenge. Do one thing every day that improves us. Today and in the month of March, this segment of the challenge, we are talking about our mental well-being, our mental health. And we talked about mindset yesterday. And today we're gonna to talk about how open-minded are you? Open-mindedness versus closed-mindedness. I'll share like a dozen tips for being more open-minded. Guess what? Anybody that tells you that you need to be less open-minded, the only reason they ever tell you that is because they want to control you. Do we want to be controlled by other people? Or do we want to control our own lives? I vote for controlling my own life at all costs and always. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about six keys to being open-minded. And I'm going to ask, I'll start off, I think, by asking you seven different questions to ask yourself. Or not questions, I guess, but uh, seven different areas to look at to determine how open or closed-minded you are. Now, I drew this cute little drawing, so I want to talk about a couple of things. Our action item today is gonna to be to, on a scale of zero to 10, and I'm going backwards here, and my arrow's probably backwards as well. Uh, look at my ends kind of backwards. Anyway, I, I'm struggling with writing backwards, not gonna, not gonna fib. Okay, so we're gonna, on a scale of zero to 10, zero being absolutely positively closed-minded, to 10, being open-minded about absolutely everything. We're gonna rate ourselves on that. Just as a, a reality check or a, a, a in t moment in time check to see, well, how open are we to different things or how set in our ways are we? Why? Because things are changing around us all the time. Now we have to be set in our ways with, and why I put depends on here is because how open or close I am on a particular topic, subject, depends on how closely it matches to my core beliefs or not. I am all in and a 10 or a nine on things that are in alignment with my core beliefs, things I believe about myself, about the world, about other people. Anything outside of that, it depends on the topic or the subject. When it comes to uh, unconditional love for my kids, I'm an absolute 10, right? When it comes to love of all humankind, I'm probably about a six or a seven, right? I love everybody. I think everybody deserves uh, what they want in life, but I'm more protective and more supportive of the people I love and care about, the people that are close to me, my, my coaching and consulting clients than all the other people and all the other businesses in the world. That's just the way it is, right? And I'm closed because I'm just not educated or dealing with a lot of those situations or other people. So let's take a quick look at what's the difference between open-mindedness and closed-mindedness. What even is the definition of open-mindedness? Open-minded means that you're willing to consider other ideas. We're unprejudiced. We look at other perspectives. We don't only have tunnel vision and only see one way of doing things. Closed-minded uh, is more interested in proving that they're right in the world and that their way of thinking is the only way of thinking or is the best way of thinking than they are in asking questions or ever being questioned. Now, I was married to a very closed-minded person, so I have personal upfront experience with how this impacts relationships and life. So let's, let's look at the differences between open-mindedness and closed-mindedness. Number one, challenging ideas. People that are closed-minded do not want their ideas and opinions questioned. They don't challenge them themselves and they certainly don't want you challenging them. Open-minded people are curious about, well, what, what the heck? Why are things the way they are? Why would this be the way things are? Uh, secondly, closed-minded people tend to make statements. Open-minded people tend to ask questions. So are you more of a question asker or a statement maker? Uh, number three, understanding uh, and the focus on being understood. Closed-minded people tend to focus on being understood instead of understanding another person's perspective or the way that other people look at things. Open-minded people are curious about well, what the heck, what makes you see it that way? What has your experience been with this particular topic and that's caused you to see it that way versus my experience, which causes me to see it a different way. Four, I might be wrong, but now this one got me because I say this. I, I don't say it all the time, but I say it. 
and I, I know I've said it in videos, I might say I might be wrong. It's a qualifier for me to say my opinion is not the only opinion, but it's just the opposite for people that are closed minded. They say I might be wrong, but, and then they emphasize their opinion in a way that makes you not even want to question it. So that's one, and that's one that got me because I do say that phrase, I might be wrong, but this is how I feel about it. But I'm not trying to make everybody think that that's the only way to feel about it. I'm just sharing this qualifier and this is my opinion about it. Number five, just shut up. Close-minded people want you to just shut up and take what they say as gospel truth and not question it. Close-minded people will shut you down and not want to hear anything you have to say about a topic. Uh, I guess we all know people like that, right? Open-minded people uh, want to know what, and they're curious, they'll ask questions. They want to know, um, and they don't want you to just shut up. They want you to explain your thinking so that they can be open to maybe understanding it and, and agreeing with parts of it, if not all of it. Number six, there's only one sperm that gets in. I liked this topic, this on the list, because Close-minded people believe that there's only one right answer to anything, right? I, I think of, te of, of certain teachers that I had in the past that were like, hey, this is my opinion. This is the only opinion in my class. This is the law. Therefore, you must agree with my opinion in the class and on tests. Uh, so don't think you're going to come in here and think for yourself. Ooh, I didn't like those teachers. And then number seven, humble pie. Uh, control controlling. Well, a lot of people that are closed-minded are controlling. Uh, closed-minded people uh, are not humble at all. They lack humility. Uh, in some instances, humanity, but humility for sure. So those are just some differences between closed-minded and open-minded people. And you can ask yourself, well, geez, how, how much humility do I show? Am I humble? Do I ask questions? Do I use the phrase, I might be wrong, but... And then what I say after that is me trying to convince people that my idea is the only right idea. Uh, challenging ideas, do you ask questions or statements, etc. All right, so what do we do about this? Now, I am going to tell you right up front, I will vote for and want to be around open-minded people all the time, right? If, if you've already made up your mind, why are we having a conversation? If I don't need a lecture on your beliefs and your thoughts and your feelings, and you don't need a lecture on my beliefs and my thoughts and my feelings. So why would we be in a relationship or even in a conversation for that matter if you know we're not there to learn something from one another? So skills that help us to be more open-minded, I'm gonna fly through this list because there's a dozen different ones. I combined two lists. Um, establish your common humanity. Guess what? Everybody is human and everyone on the planet has a right to their opinion. Their experiences have led to their beliefs about things. Your experiences have led to your beliefs about things. Guarantee the two of you or the ten of you have had different experiences. Therefore, we're never going to agree on everything. So being closed-minded and thinking everybody should think the way that, that we do is very... It's actually really rude and disrespectful to other people. And... and uh, devaluing other people, I think. Uh, so establish common humanity. Know that everybody's human and everybody has a right to their opinion. Uh, start with stories, not reasons. Start with stories and experiences that you've had that have led you to believe and think and feel a certain way and be open or closed-minded about it. And then people can pull from that the reasons that you might believe the things that you believe or feel or think the things that you do. Uh, three, allow others to feel safe changing their mind. A lot of times when you're dealing with the closed-minded people, you don't feel safe to breathe around them, much less feel like you sh are safe changing your mind. You're almost safe if you if you just don't say anything. Uh, four, validate their experiences and their interpretation of what's happened to them. Five, uh, keep focused on your goal. What are you in the conversation about in the first place? Or what are you interacting with this person about in the first place? Um, how to be more open with people, look for similar interests, be yourself, ask questions, say what you mean, um, let them know what you're looking for and why, why you're even involved with them. Uh, find people that are, you naturally connect with. We all click with certain people and clash with others. So hang around the people that you click with, but try not to be involved in groupthink, right? Uh, make sure to return the favor. 
if if people are listening to you listen to them if people ask you questions ask them questions treat people the way you want to be treated that's pretty much something we all learned in kindergarten um, if you need help ask for help if you have questions ask questions people love to help if you just let them know how they can help you um, six keys to an open mind fight the number one fight the urge to react uh, in anger or any other strong emotion I would add um, when you hear something that differs from what you thought or believed number two avoid closing yourself off so be open to things other than things that you've experienced before uh, number three place yourself out of your comfort zone Four, stay social and make new friends because then you're exposed to different ideas and thoughts and experiences five don't be afraid to ask questions and six avoid speculation don't assume right we all know what assume means so don't assume so that's our our topic for today open-mindedness closed-mindedness are you more open-minded or closed i guess closed is zero open is ten uh and like i said for me personally it absolutely positively depends on the topic at hand when it comes to belief in spirituality or religious or spiritual beliefs i'm pretty close-minded to my beliefs because i've already done my studying done my learning done my question asking and decided what i choose to believe and probably people aren't going to change my mind about religion or spirituality uh, other topics you know politics and things people could change my mind but it's one of those emotionally charged topics that I pretty much stay away from uh, kids raising my kids how to do it I'm always looking for better advice to be a better grandma or be a better parent or to create and, and on business I'm always looking for people's experience with respect to business topics I'm totally open when it comes to those so depends on the subject how open or closed we are share in the comments below scale of 1 to 10 or 0 to 10 how open are you higher the number more open you are drop my clip uh, lower the number less open you are and I will be with you tomorrow for day 70 already of our annual challenge have an awesome day